Hey guys, with the international competition starting as of last night, I wanted to give my team breakdown for the team that I'll be using in the international competition. So if you guys do enjoy this and want to see more content like this, leave a like below and subscribe. I know that it might seem a bit early to break down my team that I'm using quite literally as the tournament is live right now, but I figured it made sense to do it right now because I'll have the videos for the run going up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. So I wanted to have at least a little bit of a heads up with the team, so that anyone watching the vids for that run can know what we're bringing and why we're bringing it. So I do want to get into this team really quick, but first, I, obviously, I want to preface that this is my first time really building a team for this metagame. And while I did have a bit of help with this through several different drafts, I did ultimately take a lot of the control of the team myself. So I am very well aware it is not going to be the best team. It's probably going to be worse than everything we've ran so far, but I wanted to really try and build something myself because I had been relying on a lot of Randy and Clutch's teams, which while they did still help, I definitely took a lot of the focus on this team with some ideas that I got from both of them. Uh, so what team did I end up building around? Well, as you probably saw in the thumbnail, I wanted to build around Zekrom, but not just any Zekrom team, specifically Zekrom and Lunala. And I figured that there was a couple of reasons that I really wanted to do this. The first being is that Zekrom Lunala should be really good against a lot of the top tier Pokemon. Uh, for example, Zekrom is a great matchup for Kyogre, being able to take really any Kyogre set on in terms of a 1v1 scenario. And Lunala had a few things that I'll get into when I get into the set, but it had some really good matchups against Pokemon like Calyrex, Ice, uh, Calyrex uh, Shadow, funny enough, as well as Ice Shadow too, to be fair. So I figured it was really useful for that. And, and again, I'll, I, it might sound weird that I mentioned a Shadow Rider, but I'm going to get into that actually, because I think our set specifically should help a lot against that. And again, I, I want to preface, this is not going to be the best team in the universe, but it is the first team that I tr really tried building and I wanted to try and use something fun. Uh, so if you're not really here for the fun teams, that's fine. But this is what I wanted to run. Uh, so with that said, uh, we built around Zekrom Lunala, with the first set being Lunala with Power Herb, we have Wide Guard, Moon Guy Speed, Moon Blast, and Meteor Beam. Uh, with this sort of set, I wanted Wide Guard specifically for the Calyrex Shadow matchup, because Astral Barrage at being a spread move, I figured this could hopefully help with maybe getting up something like a Trick Room on Comfey and then trying to revenge it that way, or even with just something like, for example, uh, if I'm trying to take a turn and set up a Screens, depending on the turn, before going for a uh, scary face on Grimmsnarl or maybe a Tailwind on Whimsicott or really just whatever the reason that I'm not instinctively getting that speed control up right away to then revenge off Calyrex, I have a wide guard. And not only that, but it's also useful for stuff like, for example, Crest Blades Groudon, if I'm maybe trying to set up a Dragon Dance with Zekrom, or even just Water Spot Kyogre if I'm trying to set up, or just attack in general with Lando T. So there are a lot of options, I feel like, for wide guard to actually be very useful in this sort of metagame. Not only this, but with uh, Meteor Beam, we're able to boost our special attack to plus one, which is really useful because this Pokemon actually is a phenomenal breaker. And while the team was built around Zekrom and Lander T being the maxers, I found myself actually maxing this Pokemon probably more than both of them combined, or at the very least close to it. Uh, with Moonguys Beam as well and Moon Blast, it's able to actually hit a good amount of the metagame. And Moon Blast specifically is really here for the Grimstar matchup because I, while I do have Triple Fairy, uh, Grimstar is typically not meant to be an attacker, especially not to break other Grimstarls. Comfey is mostly here for supporting Zekrom, and Whimsicott with Dazzling Gleam is not going to cut it against Grimstar matchup. So I wanted to throw Moonblast on here. I figured it would be really useful for that, and I've actually found myself clicking in a few instances. Uh, albeit, I'm sure there's maybe a more optimal move, but between all the dragons that are alive in this format, on top of also the Grimstar matchup, I felt like this is a worthwhile bring. Uh, with stuff like Meteor Beam as well, it's great for the Incineroar matchup because Incineroar would obviously be neutral to Moonblast, and Meteor Beam should be able to Oko that very, very easily. Which is really, really useful actually because Incineroar typically would be a really good counter to something like a Shadow Calyrex. So if a team is trying to bank on a Psychic Ghost counter being Incineroar, I can massacre it and then just start running wild with Lunala, which is one of the reasons that I've been really maxing this Pokemon so frequently. Mostly just because a lot of the teams are running Incineroar as the counter to this sort of Pokemon. So with that in mind, I figured that Lunala was a good starting piece. Obviously, again, the wide guy support as well as the fact that this could still be an offensive sweeper, but like this could be very useful. The next set that I wanted to go into was Zekrom. Now, initially I wanted to run a Dragon and Zekrom, and I tried to force this on so many different builds, but ultimately it did not end up working. So instead, I went for a weakness policy Zekrom. Uh, I got the idea from Randy, and apparently this has been popularized recently from a video by uh, Aaron Cybertron Zhang. Uh, so while I didn't bring his exact set, I just went with 236 uh, HP because I knew that was just bulky and I didn't really know what his set was specifically EV'd for. So I didn't really want to try and act like I did in the video, so I just went with max HP. I figured it's still really bulky, I still take stuff like Specs, 
Ky uh, Kyogre, even if it's Specs Ice Beam or the Life Orb Dynamax Max Hailstorm, can take them even without the screens from Grimshaw, funny enough, which is actually pretty incredible as long as I have Dynamax. On top of this as well, I have uh, Pokemon like Comfey to support this and pop with this policy with Draining Kiss and Floral Healing. So I have a lot of options here. And protecting here is really useful because I do actually have Trickerman Comfey. So being able to guarantee the turn of Protect into the Trickerman Comfey and then go for Draining Kiss is really useful. And I found myself actually winning off of that in several lead scenarios with that exact same turn of events. So I really like that. Uh, with Rising Bolt as well with the Dynamax, I'm able to set my own terrain, and I've been typically going for this on the last turn to try and then set terrain and then just spam Rising Voltage for a few turns, since a lot of teams haven't really been running ground spam, but for the ones that do, I do still have Worm, which has been really useful, as well as stuff like Lunala, which have typically been leading for against the ground spam teams instead, since obviously Zergrom is not going to be the best against them, but to be fair, I could still actually do some work, since the ground spam teams typically do lose to special Zergrom that I've at least especially at plus two so i've been finding this pokemon as a really really useful breaker and honestly especially with the special set it's not really susceptible to intimidate which with land of t and Sonar being two of the top 10 use pokemon that's a pretty useful thing in my opinion and that's why physical zekron was failing for me so often where special can abuse itself both in and out of max i found as uh, it doesn't really care about most of the opposing matchup because really the only things it has to worry about are stuff like snarl spam which i haven't found a lot of typically uh, even Incineroar hasn't been running a lot of it, at least from my personal practice games. Now, that could be different in the IC, of course, but from what I've been personally practicing against, I've not found a lot of them on the ladder. On top of it as well, it's really, the only other thing that would really cripple it would be Light Screen, which is really just like grim, and then uh, I guess Whimsicott can run Light Screen, and I guess Comfy can too, but really just like that, that set of fairies, and typically I've not been finding a lot of Light Screen anyway outside of Grim. So I'm not too worried, and even still Grim can always run Reflect as well, and typically it's not going to just run one, one in screen, it's going to run both. And also I've been finding that Grim has been clicking Reflect a lot more instinctively before the light screen, so I've been able to abuse that anyway. Again, might change in the IC to be fair, the team that Aaron built was about a week old, and I'm sure the people in the IC will probably be of higher caliber than the people on the low showdown ladder, because I want to act like I'm high showdown ladder, I've been testing it on low ladder because that's where I am. Uh, but i still think that if anything else i can maybe pull off this on a few people and maybe try and sweep them that way so that's sort of what i'm banking on with zekrom next up though uh we have a life of land of t this is a pretty standard set with rock slide protect fly and earthquake i was told by randy when we were discussing this uh that apparently lando only needs 220 to get the oko on land of t on a zassian crown even with the minus one uh at least with the max quake and not only that, but with the 36 HP, obviously this gives us the 9 in the Life Orb stat, which if you're unaware, 9 in Life Orb means that I'm taking, I have as much remaining HP as possible after successfully using Life Orb 10 times. I'll have 9 HP left over, which is a little bit just optimal EVing there. Uh, again, not really sure how many times it'll matter necessarily, but it's never a bad thing to really be prepared, especially when I only need the 220 anyway. Uh, but the 252 speed is really just to tie other Landos as well as outpace a lot of the box arts that do hit that base 90 if they are running max speed. Now, I don't know how many will be running max speed, but it's still, if nothing else, just useful to tie the Landos. That's already useful as it is because it's one of the most used Pokemon. But even still, if there's, let's say, like a max speed Timmy Kyogre, I can just outpace it, go for max fly, and then maybe pull off the Zekrom because as we saw earlier, Zekrom is not running max speed. It's actually running enough speed so then in Tailwind, I can guarantee outpace pace like Caloric Shadow Rider if they're max speed. So, that was really a speed on that. And then uh, shop, uh, and then Lunala, I forgot to mention that, but Lunala's speed actually is creeping, the Kyogre's creeping uh, specifically Regieleki at plus two in Tailwind, because that's what I had ran on my Kyogre's a lot when I was doing them on ladder. So that's why I wanted Lunala to outpace, because I figured if nothing else, that's a lot more weaker to the Kyogre matchup than Zekrom would be. So I wanted to be at least a little bit prepared should I be Dynamaxing Lunala instead. Uh, whereas this lander though is mostly just meant to outpace Timmy Kyogre. I feel like it was really the best case there because again, I can get the max fly off and start getting speed control that way if I needed to. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Lander's really just meant to be a dominant Pokemon and just life up through attacks is really tearing with max. Uh, this has been as it intended to be the other max here, if not Zekrom. Though typically I haven't even maxed Lander that much. It's just been a really good breaker if nothing else uh, outside of max. So we'll take that. Though it, it still can definitely be a good max breaker. Uh, next up we have Grimstyle with Light Clay. Uh, this is just a, from what I've found, this just seems to be a standard EV spread. I found it on a few different sites like Picolytix as well as this was the spread that Aaron here in. And it was either that or Max Spidef Grim and I figured something else, maybe the Fizz Def will come in handy. I hadn't really found myself ever really needing the Spidef on Grim, so I figured that this was the most Fizz Def I'd seen in one run. And maybe that'll be useful if nothing else for some sort of matchup like Ground on our Zacian, though I really don't know what it's used for. Uh, with the Scary Face is mostly just for speed control. I've 
found that T-Wave just is a little bit less reliable in practice, and really Scary Face only doesn't end up working out against the Solgaleo matchup, which I think with this sort of team I've been a lot more prepared for. I have a few different outs to Solgaleo matchup specifically, such as the Lunala plus... I mean, honestly, the Lunala plus the Whimsicott has been a really good option for that because I can always go for Helping Hand plus Max Phantasm and just massacre it right away. Uh, other options I have as well are the Zekrom plus Comfey because what I've typically been doing is going for Trick Room on the Comfey and most of the time they'll target Zekrom, which I'll protect on and again, just try and sweep that way. So I have a few different responses, albeit nothing perfect because Soul Galio and stuff like Torn, for example, is really, really terrifying. But it's just, truthfully, I just never really play around well around that, so I didn't find it as big of a deal when I still have all these responses lined out. So I'm not too concerned with that matchup. And otherwise, though, Scary Face is probably, in most cases, the more optimal option because, for one, it's not status reliant, which means that, well, it's, it's not like an actual status, like a Thunder Wave or a Spore or something. I figure this would be good in case of any random status that came my way. And on top of that, well, Scary Face, in general, I just find is a much more reliable move to click against a lot of teams. So I went with that instead of Thunder Wave. Um, wasn't, I also just general wasn't a fan of Thunder Wave against stuff like Groudon, which the CMR had a little bit of an issue with. So I figured this was just the more reliable option. And then Spirit Break obviously is great for special attackers on top of also the light screen and just a really spammable fairy option. Uh, next up, we have Comfy with Babiri Berry, uh, with Trick Room, Floral Healing, Protect and Draining Kiss. Babiri Berry is great for all the steel spam obviously going around. And on top of that as well, uh, we have Floral Healing to heal up stuff like the Zekrom and the Lunala, especially Lunala with Shadow Shield is really amazing. And Draining Kiss is great to pop the Zekrom, so that's really useful. Uh, Trick Room, as I said, is great for the Zekrom to help have that other option besides just Tailwind. Otherwise, if I want to go with Tailwind, I have our final Pokemon being Whimsicott with Taunt, Helping Hand, Tailwind, and Dazzling Gleam. Really just standard support Whimsicott here. Didn't really know what to run EV wise. Uh, just like with the Comfey, I just picked up two spreads that I saw were standard because I didn't really know what to run EVs on these. They're both kind of frail Pokemon, so a little bit unsure because they're also kind of passive, but hey, I figured these would work. Uh, if nothing else, they've been putting in work on the ladder. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed what you saw today and want to see more, leave a like below and subscribe. Uh, with that said, shout out to the channel members being Zeke Zero, Josh AK Ultra Player, Randy Chapa, Mia, Rika Hoshizora, Pokemon Fan Majestic Xerneas, and Grandmaster Deer. You guys are greatly appreciated. And I will see you guys on Monday with the first stream. Well, with the first highlight, I should say, of our IC run. But if you want to see the stream, check out tonight at 9 p.m. EST. And with that said, I will see you guys later. Until then, peace out, guys.